Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rise. We're back here at Tampa Honda, and guess what? I have one of the early OGs of crossover SUVs before a crossover SUV was even a thing. It's this vehicle right here. This is a 2024 Honda CRV. This particular one is a sport hybrid. But before we get into this stylish, fuel sipping crossover SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. Believe it or not, when Honda came out with the CRV, it was in connection with another Japanese brand that maybe some of you have never heard of, Azuzu. There was the Azuzu and then the Honda CRV. Boy, oh boy, have things changed since then. The CRV really came into its own, and obviously, going up against its main rival, what's that gonna be? The Toyota RAV4. Both of them have been battling year in and year out. CRV got a redesign. It's been a little bit of a hot minute since the RAV4 has received its redesign. That goes back to 2019. But as the market changes and people move more and more towards BEVs, those battery electric vehicles, is the CRV hybrid still bringing the special sauce if you want to have both that usability, versatility, and of course, fuel economy? So, what I want to find out is do you go with this sport, especially with it being a hybrid version of the CRV, or do you go with the RAV4? Let's go ahead, let's dive into this urban gray. CRV Sport and find out. Right off the bat, the color. It really is one of those colors that fits the style of the CRV very nicely. At the front of the business, you're gonna see all of the LED lighting. So you're gonna have your LED daytime running lamps and turn signals, that multi LED, LED, LED headlight, and then with the Sport, you're gonna notice some black trim. So we have gloss black along the brow, and I think the black and the urban gray is a nice two-tone effect. Working our way down, a little bit of flat black, nothing too crazy, and then you'll notice that we have functional vents as we move towards the center, and I really think that this area gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look, because that's the thing. The CRV over the past few generations has been a little bland, I guess you could say, they really brought some aggressive style to the front end of the new CRV, especially this one being a sport. Now, as we come across the new grill, you have, of course, full functionality gloss black to match the other gloss black accents on the sport. And then working your way down, you do have the flat black on the lower portion with this dark, 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 flat gray, which is, this is gonna take a better beating. But like I said, having these two functional vents on both sides there just gives it a little bit more of an aggressive look. Let me know how you feel about it. I'm really liking the style of the front of the CRV compared to the current RAV4, but I'm very excited to see what the upcoming RAV4 is going to be all about. Now, as we get up onto that low slung hood, nice body lines. You have kind of comes up as a V, and it kind of curves towards the A pillars. You'll notice that with that urban gray metallic, it may look like a flat gray. It's not, it's got a pearlescent sparkle to it. Very, very nice color. Coming around the bend, what are we working with? Wheel and tire setup. So what you're gonna find when you go sport, you're gonna get this gloss black, as you can see, multi-spoke wheel. If you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of this wheel? 18 inch wheel, like the way it's got the clean design that goes with the urban gray. This is front wheel drive. You can get all wheel drive CRVs as well. And one of the things that I wanna know if you like is the flat black around the fender opening. I personally would like to see this be gloss black or all urban gray. And the reason why I say gloss black is because of the gloss black on the front of the vehicle. But if you're wondering, well, Joe, what's the size of this tire? 235 on the width, 60 series sidewall. And then as we work down the side of the vehicle, sport trim is gonna get gloss black on the mirror caps. LED turn signals really slim and trim. Gloss black roof rails, but the one zonk, the place where they really dropped the ball, was bringing this bright shiny metal work top and bottom around the window openings. This should be either a dark chrome or a gloss black. Heck, I would even take flat black right about now. Color match door handles. Some flat black along the bottom portion. I'm okay with that because that's going to take a better beating over time. 
And then as we worked towards the rear, they did a good job with the rear quarter window. And then swinging around back, I really love the taillights. The upgraded LED brake lights, you still get the old fashioned Thomas Edison light bulb. So that's gonna be a zonk, especially on a 2024 model year vehicle. That's pretty short roof spoiler. There's really not a lot of room back here, so I'm not gonna zonk the rear wiper, especially since the RAV4 also has the wiper that's exposed. We got a color match shark fin antenna up top, and then you'll notice the badging, the CRV hybrid, clean. On this side, we have our sport with the flat black. I wish all the badging was flat black, so I am gonna zonk that. Let me know how you feel about the badging. Kind of weird to have a shiny chrome and then flat black, but I do love the taillights. The way they did each of the elements looks looks spot on. And then working our way down to Chinatown, zonk on the exhaust on the driver's side. What's weird is, is that you actually have a functional exhaust on the passenger side, and Steven's gonna show you the fake one on the driver's side. So we'll call it a half a zonk. I don't know why they did that, but they did it. And that definitely is not jiving with me. So you do have the functional part over here, and you got a nice, simple, clean lower bumper area. But why don't we go ahead, let's pop the hood and talk MPGs of this CRV hybrid. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. Underneath the hood, this is where you're gonna find that hybrid magic. So what do we got going on? Two liter inline four paired to one electric motor gives us 204 horsepower, 247 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to a CVT, zero to 60 in about 7.8 seconds. So if you were hoping that the word sport would give you a faster zero to 60. Unfortunately, that is not gonna happen with this vehicle. Top speed is governed to 111 miles per hour. The vehicle weighs 3,914 pounds. Here is where it comes out on top. MPGs, 40 in the city, 34 in the highway, and the vehicle could tow a total of 1,000 pounds. So, like I said, moving towards, of ele towards electrification, full electrification, these hybrids are still bringing plenty of efficiency, but while we go ahead, let's fire this thing up and see it roll. All right, guys, we are inside this 2024 Honda CRV Hybrid Sport. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Joe, uh, I need something new. My crossover SUV that I'm using now is from the year of the flood. It's not running right. I was thinking Toyota, but I'm also kind of liking this new Honda. How much is it? Very good question. MSRP, the way that this one is optioned, is right at $35,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. I love the styling that they did. Nice, clean, simple. Soft touch material on the top of the door panel. You have that gloss black, but it's got a nice texturized portion to it that makes it look sort of like a golf ball. Very, very nice touch. The Sport has orange uh, stitching, contrast stitching, and a very, very soft armrest. And then the door pocket is a pretty good size to where you can get a New York size bagel and everything bagel with a big schmear of cream cheese and of course a bottle of yoo to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same thing. Soft touch material. I love the wire mesh that they use on the AC vents to make everything look clean. There's more of that golf ball, just like Tiger Woods golf balls, very texturized, something better than just simple gloss black. And then when you come in, you might be a little let down. It comes with the standard seven inch infotainment system. Remember the Turing gets a nine inch infotainment system. Nothing to write home about, but it does have the functions and features that you need to listen to radio, to connect your phone and all that other stuff. Let me show you the backup camera. It's a little on the grainy side, but you do have trajectory, which is really nice. And it's easy to change the angles of the camera, which is kind of cool. Put it back in the park. Working our way down, you do get dual climate control and I love the way the knobs have a nice click to them, makes it feel very high quality. You got three stages of heated seats. Working our way down, USB-A, USB-C, 12 volt. Just don't stick your finger in there. And then you could easily put, I would say $700,000. Not in cash, but 700,000 grand bars. So get those chocolate bars, 
100,000 grand. And then of course you have, this is gonna control your CVT transmission with the orange stitching. You do have your different drive modes, which is nice. I'll show you that when you come to the business side. Hill descent control, two cup holders, your standard Honda key fob, which I think they do a great job with the key fob, small, concise, and you got remote start, which is nice. Place to put one Twinkie. The materials are wonderful in here. Soft touch with the orange stitching. Lift this bad boy up. You easily got enough room, I would say, for two Enemans bung cakes. So, Enemans bung cakes. I wish, I wish there was more room for a coffee cake. Now we're talking. But if, uh, if you need a, a cake in your life because you want to celebrate something, you could put two Enemans bung cakes in there. And then the seats. They are cloth, but I like the way they use different materials. Orange stitching, nice texture. It is manual seat controls for the passenger. I have electric assist because I'm the driver. I'm the boss, I get the electric. And then you get a standard size sunroof, which is nice. And I like the fact that it's just got a black headliner. Really brings a sporty feel to the interior. But why don't you come over to the business end? I wanna show you behind the wheel of this hybrid CRV. All right guys, business time behind the wheel. You do have your electric seat controls. Nice and large, easy to get to, especially that lower lumbar. I'm six feet tall and there's plenty of room in here. Once upon a time, the first gen CRV, that thing was tiny. It was tiny, that was really compact. This is what compact means in the 21st century. Steering wheel, love the leather that Honda uses. Nice thickness, the orange stitching is very, very cohesive throughout the whole vehicle. Flat black on all the switch gear. You do have paddles for simulated gears with the CVT, and it is a manual tilting and telescoping steering wheel. And just like this vehicle's a hybrid, so is your instrumentation. You have a seven inch digital display, which you could go through those different modes, sport, normal, econ, and snow. We could build a snowman together. And then you have an analog tachometer. Obviously, as well, you could go through different information in the center of that power gauge, which is kind of cool the way they have that set up. So I could bring up my range. I could also go back and then do the power flow, which is kind of cool to see how all that is happening. And it is full color, so that's a nice touch. But why don't we go ahead, let's get in that back seat. I wanna see how much room there is for you and your passengers in the CRV. Hi guys, back seat time. And I'm telling you, compared to previous generations, they really went generous with the passenger volume in here. Now, one thing I wanna really point out about the rear seats is that they have a very interesting way of reclining. So here is basically upright. And now when you recline it, you see how the bottom portion also moves as well. So kind of cool the way the bottom portion of the seat is moving as well as the back seat. The only zonk is that I don't like the way I gotta reach behind me to adjust the seat. I wish they would just put the handle on the side here. But once you adjust it, I mean, check this out. I don't know many compact crossover SUVs, definitely not a RAV4, are you gonna be chilling like a villain, freaking laid back like this. I mean, that is really nice. Like I said, the only thing that's weird is you have to go like that, which as you can see is just stupid. Okay, so there it is. Back of the seat, there's no pocket on the driver's side. So if you have your pineapple that you picked yourself, you're gonna have to put it in between your legs. And I tell you, if you hit a bad enough bump in this back seat area, you may not be able to have kids like ever. Back of the command center, you do get two AC vents, which are nice, and two USB-Cs. I have my own pocket over here, but I'm not letting you put your pineapple in here. This is gonna be, of course, for my Twinkies. Easily put 36 Twinkies back here. And then, like I said, the seats are very comfortable. Once you get them into position, it's just a little awkward moving the seat if you're sitting in it. But while we go ahead, we got one more piece left to this pizza pie that's gonna be the cargo area. So let's see how much space we have in the CRV. All right guys, time to get into the cargo area. Push the button. This one does not have electric assist. So you're gonna have to use a little muscle. Not a big deal. The beach is that way. You're gonna be greeted to a generous volume of space. So what are you looking at? You're looking at 39 cubic feet of space. Fold those rear seats down. It goes up to 76.5 cubic feet of space. Now what I do like is they have these nooks on both sides. This is large enough for a gallon of chocolate milk and that side is large enough for a full box of Twinkies 
And if you notice, there's a the space right above it. You got a 12 volt, so you can get your Twinkie heater and heat up your Twinkies. You can't, there's no storage underneath here. If I lift this up, which I can't, you see how it's like sort of bolted? That's where the battery is for the hybrid system. It uses a lithium ion 1.1 kilowatt battery pack, but you can fold down the seats. It is a rear 60-40 split. Let's see if I could do it. Fold down the seats, boom. The only thing that's a pain in the butt is that because the seats recline, you gotta really get in there to get them to go down. So that's definitely a bit of a challenge. And let me know if you think that's a zonk, me struggling to get that seat down because they recline different positions. So you gotta really make sure that you jump into the back to get the seat down. But that's 76.9 cubic feet of space, which is a ton of space. Think about the Costco runs you could do in this thing. But why don't we go ahead I'm ready to go for a run, a little bit of an on-throttle run in this CRV hybrid. All right, guys, we left Tampa Honda and we're in this 2024 Honda CRV hybrid sport. Right away, you're gonna love the room that's up front for the driver and the front seat passenger. It, it just feels very spacious and I like the way it's organized. You have a real shifter, not one of those push button things. You got a place for all your Twinkies. And even though the infotainment system is small, it's very easy to get to. It's a very short reach. But Honda does an awesome job with their steering wheels. The dash is so easy to read at a glance. And then you got your different modes. Right now I'm in, in sport, but you could easily adjust from sport to normal, to economy and then snow, depending if you live in that type of environment. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it in sport, and that's gonna adjust how the engine and the transmission behave along with steering sensitivity and throttle sensitivity, but really, really drives nice and rides nice. The seats are supportive without being too hard on your backside, and visibility is fantastic in here. Of course, you have all the Honda sensing technology, blind spot monitoring, lane keep assist, all those goodies. And the fact that your passengers are gonna have plenty of room, I think is gonna keep them happy as well. I wanna make a U-turn here and just show how easy that is. Very nice, easy to do. On throttle. So you got the simulated shift from the CVT which is really going to help with the overall driving experience. I'm so glad that they did that, and I'm so glad that they did it well. It's one of those transmissions that, yes, it's a CVT, but having those simulated shifts done well really makes you forget about it. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, why do they do CVT still? It's because it gets you better fuel economy. This being a hybrid is going to have better fuel economy with a CVT than compared to other types of transmissions. It's just, that's the way it works. But having all of the technology in here to keep you safe and maximize that fuel economy, I think is really gonna make it a worthwhile cause to look at a CRV over a RAV4. And the visibility is great in here. I mean, side mirrors are a great size, windshield is nice and open. And we're gonna get on the highway to see how this thing cruises because obviously lots of people are gonna take family trips and they're gonna use their CRV for those family trips. On throttle! So getting up to speed to merge is actually not too shabby. I know this isn't the fastest of the compact crossover SUVs, but I think you're gonna be just fine with how this thing has just enough get up and go for you to be able to merge successfully. But driving down the highway, very, very smooth. Not too much noise. And everything is very tight in here in a good way. You're not getting creaks, rattles. Everything feels very, very well put together. And I like the way the interior has very little gloss black. And I think that is gonna help cut, cut down on driver fatigue because a lot of times when you have all this gloss black the sun bounces all over it and it blinds you in your face and that just makes you more fatigued this is going to keep you 
more refreshed because of it well designed to not have that glare beam you in the eye. Another thing you're gonna like is just the steering feedback. No matter what type of vehicle it is, Honda does a great job with getting good communication through the front wheels and into the steering wheel. So you're gonna be very happy with that, even though this is a crossover SUV. But just really, really nice the way they made the changes from the previous generation in a very smart way, and it just feels good in here. And I think that's one of the important parts, especially with it being a hybrid, is you're getting good versatility out of the cargo area, because remember, we do have that lithium ion battery pack back there, but you're also getting good storage area and everything's arranged very nicely up front as well. Pulling away from the light, it's a very, very smooth transition when the two liter inline fork turns on, kicks on. It's not like you get a big herky jerky or anything like that. So I think that's another reason why I like this hybrid setup in the CRV is just the way that, uh, that the engine turns on and off. When you're not in sport mode, it actually changes the sound. So you do get a little sound pumped in when you're in sport mode, take it out of sport mode, and it's simply just quiet. You're not getting any sound pumped in. But we're back here to Tampa Honda. I'm hoping that this has been a good overall review for you. We're gonna wrap this one up. So I'll see you in a split second. Right, guys, it's been another great day out here at Tampa Honda. Definitely gotta thank Sam and the rest of the crew getting us access to their very first 2024 Honda CRV Sport Hybrid. Let me know what you think. Is this the right recipe for compact crossover SUV success, or are you gonna go with the main rival, the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid? Let me know down in that comment section, but if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. I'll come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Wise family. Of course, we need to give it up. Stephen Flood, Stephen Flood Photography, working the camera, no matter how much sun or how much shade is shining on him, he's here through thick and thin. So show them some love in the comment section. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you're doing. Just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.